Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and this week we finish off the bonnet and continue on the bodywork on the Alfa Ferrari. Okay guys, well if you're enjoying these videos, uh, please think about subscribing because uh, we're so close to that 100,000 mark, I can taste it. Um, it would be great if you, uh, if you jump on there and subscribe and keep uh, up to date with all of these crazy builds. Last week you saw me uh, sort of going through and refining the shape on the, uh, the bonnet here of the Alfa Ferrari and uh, this week I'm going to continue that. So the first up, it's uh, getting it off and getting up underneath and, uh, and finishing off the structure of this bonnet. So uh, let's not mess around, let's get stuck in. So last week you would have seen me going around and uh, I've sort of put the framework underneath this, uh, this reveal and um, I've tacked it in all the way around. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get the TIG out and I'm gonna go around and just, uh, and just weld this up completely all the way around and seal in this edge um, as that is gonna be a finished edge when I'm done, that, that'll be uh, exposed and uh, the, the Lexan cover is gonna be from the inside um, just sort of uh, glued underneath straight into that uh, reveal. So let's uh, weld it up. Okay, so I've gone through, I've welded up the whole edge and made uh, the framework all part of this. Obviously going through and welding it all up, um, it's not perfectly square, so um, I'm gonna sort of go through and add and uh, uh, add in a bits of weld and stuff in some of these little dips and try and get it all nice and flat and square. But, uh, but also I've noticed, if I grab my straight edge, um, that there is, there's a, there's a slight negative dip in these parts here. I looked and uh, in the framework underneath, I can't get a shrinker in there, but what I might do is I might cut some relief slots in the, um, the framework under here, uh, just so I can sort of shape it and get it just the way I want it, and uh, which means curving these sections up a little bit. And, uh, and then I can sort of re-weld them, which will help sort of pull it and, uh, and get it the shape that I want. So uh, more tweaking ahead. All right, so my frame is all welded in now. It's a nice, neat transition all the way around. Uh, I'm quite happy with that. And this is obviously adds a lot of structure to this, uh, to, the, to the opening. That I'm quite happy with. But what I'm gonna do now is start tying it into the rest of the bonnet and adding back in some of the structure that I've cut out of the bonnet. As you can see, these, uh, these under bonnet braces I've cut out. I've also cut out a lip across the front here. Um, what I'm gonna do, first of all, I'm gonna need to uh, weld back in the, uh, this frame into the, uh, the original bridge uh, rib sections in here. That will tie in this part. And then I've gotta make something up. I'm gonna make up another uh, sort of rib section to run along this, uh, along this side to sort of tie back in these uh, braces with the, uh, the sort of the frame. And you'll see it as I sort of play around, I'm gonna just, just uh, have a bit of a play and see what I can make up that will, uh, that will sort of fit the uh, purpose. Okay, just after a bit more playing around, what I've found is that there's a couple little spots in here that have um, a little bit of oil canning. So you can see there that it actually, um, it, it, 
the, the panels pop in and out, which means basically that they're, um, they've been stretched and they're, they're a little bit big. So what I'm gonna go through and do now, um, it's here and it's a bit worse on this other side over here in the sort of same spot. And what I need to do is I need to shrink the, uh, the, the bonnet back a little bit, just, just, just a little bit, just to take, just to basically at the moment, the, uh, the metal is just, just wants to, to flex and, and stretch like this because there's a bit too much there. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to get the, uh, the heat gun on it and, uh, and do a little bit of shrinking. And some of you might've seen me do this on the Datsun previously. Basically the, um, the principle is um, I will heat it up and you can actually physically see when I do it, um, it it'll actually raise up the metal in, in, in a spot and sort of create an egg in the metal. And what, what I'm doing is, if you imagine I'm, by heating it up, the metal expands and it creates this egg but while it's hot, I hammer it down flat again, so then when it cools, it pulls tight, and it will, it will just take a little bit of this flex out of the metal. I don't want to do it too much, because this is not that bad, it's just a, just a little bit, and I just want to get rid of that, that little bit of drumminess out of there. I just, want to, I just want to tighten it up just that little bit, and I think it'll be perfect, so let's give it a try. So just to give you an idea, um, this, is, this is what the side is before I start. And look at the gaps underneath the, uh, the straight edge. You can see how, how big a low I've got here. There's another low here, there's another low here. So what I'm gonna be doing now is just going through and trying to bring that all down so that it's nice and uh, neat and smooth. You can see as it gets closer to the edge, it gets much neater. But uh, back over here, it's pretty bad. That was lots of backwards and forwards, but I'm actually uh, pretty happy with the result. So you can sort of see here now that there is not a lot of uh, not a lot of light underneath these things. There's sort of a little bit here and there, but this, it's not perfectly flat. It's going to need a tiny skim, um, but tiny, which is exactly what I was looking for. So I am much happier with that now. It's uh, looking good. So now we can get underneath and start doing more of that uh, reinforcing. All right, so um, I've got to make some more braces up for underneath the bonnet now. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I've taken a piece of the old bracing that I cut out, and I'm gonna try and remake something similar to this profile. It's not gonna be exact, it's gonna be a little bit sharper curves than what this is, but uh, uh, I'm going to make the similar profile up on the folder. Um, to start with, I'm just gonna make it out of a piece of scrap just to get my measurements right, and then I can start making up the, uh, the actual pieces with uh, some bigger stock. So what I did there is I marked out uh, one centimeter spacings on this piece of just flat stock and kept folding it until it met the profile that I wanted. And, uh, and now I've got a rough idea of where I need to bend them and how big I need to make the, uh, the pieces that I want. So um, I know that I want uh, 65 mil wide strips that I can then fold up to make the piece that I'm looking for. So uh, that's what I'm gonna start doing. I'm gonna cut out a uh, 65 mil strip and see if I can fold it into the bit that I need.
All right, well, that was a lot of back and forth on the, uh, on the folder to try and get these right because um, my brake is not, is, is pretty horrible. It's a sort of a three-in-one machine that doesn't really do any of the three things very well. And uh, basically what happened is by folding this, it ended up, it folds the ends more than it folds the middle. It doesn't do a nice even curve. So I had these, these things were warped. So I had to go backwards and forwards for ages to try and get them straight. And now they're actually looking quite straight and even and, uh, and very similar in profile to what was here under the bonnet. So I've got these two, which are going to sort of fit into those sort of areas like that. And then I'm gonna blend them in. So that's my next task is to start uh, sort of trimming and making these things fit where I want them. So you can see here I've cut up the brace. So basically what I did is I laid it over the top to roughly where I wanted to go. I notched out around the frame up here where uh, I wanted it. And I knew basically to get these uh, sort of to line up reasonably well, I marked over the, um, the, the areas, the parallel lines of where the major ridges were, and then worked out a triangle from the center of that piece off to uh, sort of parallel with those edges. Hard to explain, but basically by doing that, that's why I got this nice sort of fitting triangle up the top here and here. And uh, as you can see here, um, there's a bit of panel beading on this corner to get it to fit, but this is gonna be a quite a nice brace through this area. All I'm gonna do now, there's actually, um, all bonnets have this. It looks like it's a bit of a dent here um, on, the, uh, on the structure of the bonnet and it's matched on the other side. It's only a subtle thing, but that's actually the crumple zone. So that's designed to be a weak spot. So if the bonnet is hit from the front, it's going to bend up in the middle just here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, add that crumple zone in to uh, this part of, the, uh, of that brace as well. Um, I did look at the possibility of grafting in the corners that of the other pieces that I cut out to get these sort of perfect curves and stuff. If it was an external body part, I probably would spend a lot more time on that. But uh, as it's an internal thing, you will see it when the bonnet's up, but it's not. Yeah, I just, I don't think it's worth all of that extra effort to cut and, uh, and, and match in all of these curves. It's gonna be a lot more work. Um, this I think will still tie in well, will still look good and neat and tidy and, uh, and do the job. So that's the way I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna tack this in now and then I'm gonna start work on the other side. All right, I am happy that we have a nice, good, solid, secure framework now. I still have my uh, crumple zones in here. I'm happy with that. The last thing I need to do is just go over this front edge where I've taken this, uh, this factory rib out. I was gonna use the original piece, um, but it had these sort of, because it had two ribs going up forward, it had these sort of uh, lumps in the middle there. I wasn't happy with it. I did try and sort of briefly try and hammer it out and realized it was gonna be horrible. So I'm going to just make up another sort of two sections here, have it come in as sort of a bit of a, an angle section. And uh, I think that should do the job, fill it in, do the last uh, little fill in. And, uh, and then I am happy with how that, uh, how that bonnet bracing is. I think it's gonna be solid enough to do the job. All right, so I folded up this, uh, this strip here that's just sort of the right profile for what I'm after, but obviously it's got to curve around this angle. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna probably make 
two relief cuts. It's reasonably straight sort of coming across this way and then it's reasonably straight sort of to here. Um, instead of just having it like a, a V, I might just do two reliefs. So it'll be two straights and then sort of square it up in the middle a little bit and that will be enough uh, to, to make this sort of reinforcement, fill that in and uh, we should be good. So let's start cutting and tweaking and making this fit where it needs to fit. So some of you might recognize the method I'm using here. It's uh, Fitzy's method. Um, I saw it on um, his channel, Fitzy's Fabrications. Basically, I've overlaid the, um, the panel, so overlapped it. And to actually to get it to sit down perfectly, what I'm doing is I'm going through and I'm cutting um, through these tack welds at a 45 degree angle and then just sort of cut through a tack weld at a time. By cutting at a 45 degree angle, the, the panels are like that. So you can bring them down so they, they touch together and they get nice and square and then tack them again so you get this nice flat even weld all the way along. So you just sort of, as I said, I'm just, just cutting a tack and then do a couple of tacks and then cut the next tack, um, the original tack and put more tacks in the right spot all the way along and you get a nice flush even fit, nice and easy, uh, very good way of uh, doing this sort of repair. So uh, let's keep going. Well, that was another full episode just working on a bonnet bolt. <laughs> and this is the stuff that you're not really gonna see. But I am really happy now. There is lots more structure back into this bonnet. Um, it's quite a solid unit now. Um, yeah, it's, it's looking good. Um, all of this has all come in quite nice. As you can see where I uh, welded that extra bracing in. Um, I'm quite happy, but that is definitely all the time we have. So uh, I think that means it's time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, Alfa Romeo began to step up their re-entry into Formula One in 1979 with the 179. After a poor showing in its only race that year, they brought in the Frenchman Patrick Depailly to drive alongside Bruno Giacomali in the other car in the 1980 season. Depailly had a reputation as a great test and development driver which proved invaluable for the car's evolution. In the first races of the season they qualified in the back of the grid. Although Depailly did manage to make his way forward and come in fifth in Argentina. As the year progressed Depailly qualified in sixth and then a month later in third. Although Alfa did not win a race that season due to the car's horrible reliability issues they were often front runners. The season took a huge turn when Depayé was testing the car in Hockenheim in Germany and he blacked out in the high-speed Oster curve. His car flew off into the trees and he was killed. His work on the car had not gone in vain, however, when the final race of the season, Jack O'Malley took pole at Watkins Glen. He had been leading the race for most of the day, however, due to an electrical failure, he ended up finishing his day early. All right, that was another... Uh, another Fun week of working on the bonnet again, but I am very happy with how that's turned out. We've got all the structure done now, so it is actually, um, it, it's actually something that can go on the car. Uh, I can see I've still got little tweaks to do on the, uh, when the final fitment, when I do the body work, but that is fine. I'm happy with how it is now. 
We can move on. Yay. It's great. Yes, something else. <laughs> We're getting there. Uh, it's been a hard slog, but it's going to be worth it. It's going to be perfect. Ish. Mm -hmm. um, as long as I get, get to take the keys and I don't lose them to somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> Please check out the video of me driving the Porsche if you yes. want to see some see. real power rests and progress driving. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, I'm just going <laughs> to feel like I'm raving. Please uh, like and subscribe if you haven't. And if you'd like to see the videos a day early. Um, Watch them on Patreon. Uh, yep. Ad free. Ad free. Yep. And uh, you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram. And uh, that often gives you little uh, hints as to what's coming up. So, uh, Snippets. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Bye, Bye guys. Re-entry into the Formula One. Depayu progressed. Depayu was testing the car in Hochheimer in Germany. Oh, <laughs> High-speed curve, Ostkurve. <laughs> no. Racing at Glen...